What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having an all right day today. Now, Bitcoin currently at the time of making this video is back below $17,000. Now look, by the time you're watching this video, this price could literally be anywhere because every single time Bitcoin is attempting to set up to make a breakout, forming some kind of a pattern, we have another bit of news that comes out from the FTX debacle and it just sends the markets absolutely crazy. Now you could see today the stock market as of opening is technically green, whereas Bitcoin is in fact falling. So I do want to get into some of the technicals today, but there's a lot happening behind the scenes. You could see over here, huge, huge news this morning. If you guys are following me on my Twitter, we tweeted this the moment that it came out. So FTX officially releases this from the FTX group companies. Comex voluntarily have chosen to go into chapter 11 bankruptcy right now. They're is also this tie between this and FTX US. Now, once again, Sam coming out saying, don't worry, we're gonna do everything we can, everything's fine, don't worry about FTX US, right? And yet again, it seems like he is lying because here we are, chapter 11 bankruptcy, and from what I'm hearing, I don't have 100% you know, proof of all of this, but apparently this also involves FTX US. And you know, the bad thing is it's not just in the crypto space, but literally just moments after this, you also have break news over on Bloomberg Crypto. So this is what the world is waking up to today. Breaking news of the last 15 minutes or so, FTX filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The company's controversial chief executive, Sam Bankman-Fried, resigning as CEO and will remain to assist in an orderly transition. Let's get to Shanali Bassett for more. Hey, Shanali. John, orderly is difficult when you have an entity that has 130 entities across the globe really looking to file for bankruptcy and receive whatever assets they can to make make some investors partly whole again. However, the value of a lot of their holdings obviously have fallen dramatically. You have FTX trading, the FTX US entity, Alameda Research, which is Sam Bankman frieds trading shop, and again, like I said, the 130 additional companies. There are certain subsidiaries that are not part of this filing. Ledger X, FTX Digital Markets, an Australian entity, and an Express Pay. What happens to those is a little bit unclear, but remember, the ones that are filing have a lot lot of things that they're invested in as well and a lot of counterparties that we don't know how they will fare through this. To make matters worse, things get even deeper when you have Representative Tom Emmer coming out and, you know, Gary Gensler says, I'll be joining Andrew Sorkin on Squawk Box and we talked about that. I didn't pl play the video clip yesterday because it was a lot to go over and I was in a bit of a rush, but you could see he says, interesting, Gary Gensler runs to the media while reports to my office allege he was helping SPF and FTX work on legal loopholes to obtain a regulatory monopoly. We are looking into this. So this goes even deeper than just crypto. This goes even deeper than just SPF and Alameda. Could Gary Gensler himself actually be involved in some of this nefarious wrongdoings? Was he taking money. I don't want to make allegations. I don't know anything about what's going on in the background, but this does seem like the rabbit hole go goes even deeper. And, you know, to make matters worse, here's another company. You might, you might've heard of BlockFi, another, uh, lending platform I've never spoke about, never promoted on this channel because I'm very hesitant about these types of high API returns, but BlockFi, a centralized entity that provides USD loans on crypto collaboration, um, collateralization, excuse me, has announced that they are pausing withdrawals. The company said they are shocked and dismayed by the events unfolding at FTX and Alameda. BlockFi thought to have exposure with about 400 million line of credit from FTX US. Now, normally this wouldn't seem to be an issue Issue, but now it also appears as if FTX US is in fact involved in this entire situation. This is the crypto contagion. This is spreading right now fear across the markets, definitely fear to people not invested. And as I've been saying, you know, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here, but these types of black swan events are very, very bad for the space. Now they're awesome if you want to accumulate Bitcoin cheap. I'm having a great time buying Bitcoin underneath 20,000. I mean, yeah, if we go to 10, I'll buy more great right but short term to even midterm this is not good for the markets this is going to cause you know a bit of a, you know an issue now currently you can see that we did actually come all the way back down into this blue zone this morning. We have bounced out of it. Um, I did not have an opportunity to put a trade in because honestly, it missed my number. Uh, you can see right here, we got down to about uh, 13,343 and I had my buy, uh, excuse me, 16,300 and 
uh, 43 and I had my buy at 16,255. So as you guys can see, unfortunately, I literally, literally just missed that, which that's how markets are, right? They, they don't quite give you what you want, but I still would be very, very hesitant because you can see right here, you know, so far in this four hour, uh, you know, uh, time frame that we're looking at, we did have a little bit of a rejection off that. So we really need to break above this level right here. We need to get Bitcoin back above $17,500. And I mean, as in we need to do this, you know, hopefully by the end of the day, worst case scenario Monday, because if not, What's going to end up happening is, you know, we could end up coming to the end of this triangle, which should be sometime around, you know, November, really actually tomorrow, actually at that point, November 12th. And then we could have this uh, breakdown. And I, I apologize, guys. This is the one hour chart, not the four hour chart. Um, trying to get this video out quick because every time I make a video, there's just some other crazy news that comes out. I mean, I'm pretty much just going to have to go live and just do a live stream all day long. I mean, that's the only way to keep up with all this crazy stuff that's happening. Um, you can see right here, we are attempting to hold this downward sloping trend right here, right? You can see we're trying to hold above it. So that would actually be a, uh, you know, a retest right on this bear, uh, bearish trend line, which if that is the case could be good. But once again, like I said, and this is going back to yesterday's video, we need to get back above the bottom of this descending triangle, right? This was the descending triangle. Everybody said we were going to break down. We actually broke out. We should have continued to the upside, but then of course we had the black swan event came out, which just completely threw a wrench in the gears and it, which is why we came down here. However, if we do have a nice bounce off of this level, and like I said, I did, unfortunately I missed that trade. It would have been nice to get in on it. I missed it by like a hundred dollars, but the next one, like I said, is getting back above this $18,140 level, a little bit of retest come down here. And then we may be able to continue to the upside. But the scary part is, is if we actually look at this uh, falling wedge right here, you know, and we do fall to the bottom of it, that level is sitting at around $14,300. Now the good news, the good news is that the order books if you look at them, I don't have them pulled up right now. There are a lot of buyers right around that $14,500 level. I mean like a massive buy wall for Bitcoin. So there is a possibility that they just wouldn't let it go any lower than that because it would just be too hard to break through all of that. But nevertheless, the technical level, if we were to fall down to that point is actually around, you know, 14,300 or so. So I'm not saying that that is going to happen. I'm just saying with this whole crypto contagion thing that's going on right now, how many more of these companies are affected? How many more? I mean, BlockFi is closing withdrawals. Now that's going to create more panic, right? I mean, this is just absolutely pandemonium in the space. And once again, I cannot stress it enough to you guys. If you do not already have your coins off of exchanges, please buy yourself a ledger. I have a tutorial. You can watch it. It's for free. You don't have to use my link. I don't care. Just get yourself literally just get yourself a cold storage wallet. Okay. And if you're not actively trading, do not keep your crypto on exchanges. Now you some, you know, we have to use exchanges when we're trading. I have to trust, you know, BitGet with, with some of my money, right? Because I'm trading, right? And you know what? That's the risk that you take. But if you're not trading, get it off. If you're holding, you know what to do. Now, you know, looking at this Wall Street cheat sheet, I don't know how much it is is worth looking at in this scenario, but you know, you could see we kind of had a very similar double top kind of thing like this, right? We came down and now we're having, here's the double bottom, right? And if you go back here, kind of looks like that's what we're having right here, this sort of double bottom area. But keep in mind that, you know, these things don't just end overnight. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is once you get into these type of bear markets, especially with the news that came out, you could literally go sideways for, you know, six to eight months before having a recovery. Now, for somebody like me who doesn't have a time horizon of, you know, six months, I I'm in it for 10 years, 20 years, my whole life. I'm not worried about what's happening happening today long term but short term this is certainly going to be pretty bad for the average investor and especially trying to get these new guys coming into the space and if it turns out that Gary Gensler and I'm not trying to create a conspiracy here is somehow involved in all this this is massive this is this is a huge huge thing this is a massively large news story um, that's going to be really really hard for the industry to shake and you know just pointing out you know you could really just look at the simplicity of these charts and you could see right here this was the Terra Luna wick that we had down here and if we come all the way over here you know look at this guys 
Look at what we're doing. We're having this act as resistance. This is acting as resistance. So we need to break above this level. And, you know, if you even want to remotely start talking about being, you know, like super bullish again, you have to get all the way back up to this red line somewhere above 19,500 before we can even say, hey, the bull is back on. And, I, you know, I know I've been saying on this channel that I was anticipating a Santa Claus rally into the end of the year. And there was nothing in the charts that was telling us that that should not be possible. I mean, we're having CPI data come out. We had the, you know, S&P having a bounce, but then we have this happening in crypto. And between what's happened with Celsius, what's happened with FTX, now we're having these other VCs coming out saying that they're having issues. They were, you know, exposed, also indirectly exposed in some cases to some of the tokens that they were holding. And now BlockFi is pausing withdrawals. Guys, this is just one of those historical moments that you're living through. You're going to look back on and maybe maybe laugh, maybe laugh about it eventually at some point, but this is something that is really really unfortunately going to in my in my opinion push us back a little bit farther. You know, if we were looking to maybe get out of this bear market sometime, you know, in Q1, maybe now that's pushed to Q3. You know, I don't I hate saying that out loud, but look at what happened. Look at what's going on in the news. Look at what people are saying about crypto right now, right? We know this has nothing to do with Bitcoin whatsoever, but nevertheless, people will perceive it that way. In fact, this is kind of crazy, but when my dad came out and, and called me the other day and was talking, we you know, he was asking me about the FTX thing. He was like, so then doesn't this prove that Bitcoin isn't secure? And, you know, all respect to my dad, but he doesn't really, un you know, fully understand the way the blockchain works, but that's how people are, are, are perceiving it, right? People are perceiving this has something somehow to do with crypto as a whole, with Bitcoin as a whole. No, it doesn't. This has to do with centralized exchanges. This has to do with people in power irresponsibly taking advantage of their clients, doing things that are certainly 100% illegal. I mean, this is like, you know, Bernie Madoff type stuff, right? You're taking people's money. You're saying that you're going to do one thing with it and you're doing something completely different with it. This is definitely against the law, guys. Um, you know, but I don't know what's going to end up happening. I mean, you know, should Sam be behind bars for this? I mean, it, <laughs> imagine anyone else doing this and with this amount of money, you know, and, and now Gary Gensler's trying to help them jump through loopholes and more people are becoming insolvent. Um, you know, I'm not trying to say that this means that Bitcoin's going to crash down to 10,000, but what's going to happen if these guys are forced to sell these big whales still? I mean, are they sitting on Bitcoin still? Are they going to have to use that Bitcoin in order to pay, you know, other, are they going to have to liquidate? That's the, that's the question that I'm asking. And that's the thing that I can't see in a chart. I cannot see that in a chart, right? Now you can see right here, we are attempting on the one hour to uh, maybe hold above this level. This is not enough to confirm it. We need to have at least a daily candle holding above 16,830 right here. Um, yeah, I mean, that has to, we have to have, a, we have to close daily above that. Preferably, it would be even better if we can get back above the, uh, the, the back above the $17,400 level would be better. Um, but this, this would be minimal, minimal. We'd like to hold above this by the end of the day. So I'm not going to give any crazy, uh, crazy trading signals right now because there really isn't any. Um, the only signal that we did have was breaking and holding above 18, which clearly we fell. So on the lower end, the next area is down at 16,255, which I suppose we did technically have that wick and it did miss my buy order. So I, I was una un unable to get into that trade, which would have been nice because, you know, in like a half hour, you know, 3%, 10, that, that could have been a 30% on a 10X, but what are you going to do guys? What are you going to do? Sometimes you miss these moves in the markets, right? Um, and you definitely don't want to come to the bottom of this. Uh, if, if, if this is a giant broadening wedge to the downside, uh, you don't want to do that, guys. That that's let's hope that 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 we don't break down to the downside because then that puts Bitcoin down into like the eleven thousand dollar range, which I guess at this point anything is possible considering what's going on. I would say that's quite unlikely. You would think worst case scenario you would you would resweep the bottom lows, right? You would come back down and you know basically put in you know a giant double bottom like this, and that would be a retest at around you know five thousand five hundred. So you you know definitely you know you could put some DCA orders down at five thousand five hundred. That might not be a bad idea. Um, yeah, but like I said, it's really hard to do the technicals uh, when you have all of this crazy stuff coming out in the news, right? The the other thing too is like if you look at what's happening with the, the DXY, the DXY has not only definitely confirmed breaking out of this. This is a confirmation, by the way. It has confirmed breaking out of this trend, but also this is the first time that it's ever traded below the uh, previous high. You can see right here we had this high here, and then we had some support here, and we broke through that. But any other time that we ever had that, for example, you know, this was the high right here. 
Nope, we bounced off that, right? If we come down here, right, this was the high down here, never even got close to it, right? So this is the first time that the dollar is actually breaking below the previous uh, high. So does this mean that we are actually in that reversal? Well, theoretically, that should be good for Bitcoin, should be good for stocks, right? Except, you know, uh, stocks, for example, what are they doing? Yeah, they're still hanging out in the green. And, you know, Bitcoin is, uh, you know, still hanging down here again, trying to break through this level. So... Like I said, this is one of those moments where I know you guys don't want to hear this. We have to kind of just wait and see what happens. I mean, we have these levels we can play. There was that level this morning. I missed it by literally 100 bucks. I wish I got in on that trade. I missed it. But nevertheless, you know, trading right now, it's a little bit risky unless we have these confirmations of these breakouts or breakdowns, right? Confirmation to either side. And right now, we're just kind of hanging around in no man's land, in uncharted territories, you know, sort of waiting to see. Um, what comes out from this situation. So kind of sucks. And on top of that, we're going into the weekend. But like I said, guys, nevertheless, long term, I am super bullish on Bitcoin forever. Like that's not going to change. And I think eventually long term, people are going to become educated and realize that this is not Bitcoin. This is an individual. This is an organization. This is greed to the next level. This does not represent Bitcoin and what Bitcoin is and what Bitcoin does. The Bitcoin network is still up and running. It's still making blocks every 10 minutes. It's still, you know, doing what it needs to do, being censorship resistant and all that other stuff. But these guys are really putting a bad taste in the average everyday retail and, you know, uh, in institutions, you know, these guys that hold funds for their clients. Are they going to feel comfortable and where are they going to hold it? right? So definitely crazy times we're going through. I wish this was more of like a positive video. Um, but one thing I can say is do get subscribed to the channel because these like news events are just happening all the time. They're coming out left and right. And it's really just, it's making it um, exciting for me because it's more stuff to talk about, but it's also making it a little bit scary because of the news that keeps coming out. It's like every time FTX or Binance tweets, it's just like some terrible news that just keeps the price down right now. So you know, as I said, getting back to the Wall Street cheat sheet, you know, whether you think we're down in the anger or maybe we're down in the depression, I don't really know specifically, but nevertheless, you could see that you still need to build that base. You need to build that structure. And we could be going sideways still for another six to eight months. And it may even have been extended a little bit longer due to what these guys are doing right now. So that's just the facts. That's just what's going on. I just want to tell you what I'm seeing in the charts. But like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I don't care if Bitcoin does go down to 10,000. It really doesn't matter. We will be here every day attempting, right, to make some money, especially on these trades and following this very, very, very closely because eventually this will turn around and eventually the space will come back and everything will rise like the Phoenix from the flames. You know, we've seen things like this before in crypto. We've seen Mt. Gox get hacked. We've seen a lot of situations, maybe not as many as bad with as much money in such a short amount of time. I will, I will give it that much. We haven't ever seen this much in a short period of time. But I do know that every single thing that's ever happened in crypto, all the forks and the fighting and the scams and the BitConnects, right? If you remember BitConnect, all of those things, uh, plus token, remember that was a Ponzi, all these different things that we've seen, we've always been able to wash clean and start over. It's just this one may drag out a little bit longer than usual. But guys, at the end of the day, I love you. Bitcoin is where it's at. You know, altcoin super risky right now. Um, there actually is a few altcoins I'm looking at, but I'm super skeptical to even mention them because, you know, people watch the video, they ape into them and then they panic and they sell them and then all of a sudden it's a pump and dump. But I would like to share some of those with you at some point. There are some altcoins I've been accumulating just kind of, you know, on the side over just in case, you know, just for the next bull run. But right now, I think that the main focus is definitely Bitcoin and everything that's going on with FTX, Alameda and all those guys. So that's it for me, guys. I love you. You're awesome. Make sure you get subscribed. Make sure you turn on the bell notification. If you do want to learn how to trade. You can always use a paper account. You don't have to use real money. You, you know, if you want to practice that way, if you lose, what does it matter, right? It wasn't your money anyway. And also if you want to get extra bonuses, you can get those in the links below. So you can actually trade with their money. And if you make a profit, you can keep it. But if you lose it, no big deal. It was free money anyway, right? But nevertheless, guys, at the end of the day, Dollar cost averaging is always everyone's best friend, not financial advice. I'm just a guy on the internet. But if you do want to learn to trade, make sure you watch this tutorial popping up right here, right now. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.